What's going on boys? My name is Dawson and I run Brash Garage. If you can't tell, I am a little bit sweaty right now. And there's a reason for this and there's a reason why there hasn't been more videos coming your way on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. Everything is locked in this shop and can't go anywhere. I'll just show you why. It is a winter wonderland out here. Look how deep it is. My whole foot's gone. And I just spent the last hour and a half shoveling out a spot for the Accord. And yes, this snow is very, very deep. So this is what I've been doing. Shoveling, shoveling, and more shoveling. Now that I've got the car parked and not stuck deep in the snow, for the last hour and digging, we can start our video. And boys, we are in for a lot more snow. So if you don't see a lot of videos on YouTube on a weekly basis, just know that this weather is why. But today, I wanna talk about 2024 and our plans for the built EG. If you guys have been watching, you know we're building this B18B right here, and I have another piece to the puzzle in this box. So. I want to go over today, sit down with you guys with the EG and fully explain the plans for this car in 2024 and what exactly we're doing with this engine and the build. Because just last night I ordered the biggest piece to the puzzle. Stay tuned to find out what it is. All right, let's take a seat and talk build plans with our built EG hatchback. So first things first, I'm sure you guys are well aware by now that this B16A under this hood is getting swapped out for our B18B. Now that engine has a built head. I think, I'm pretty sure it has cams. I know for sure it's got valves, valve guide springs, retainers, head studs, and an MLS head gasket, stock bottom end, and we are going to be utilizing that for boost. When I got this car, that B18 came in this car and we swapped it out for the NA Type R swap, Civic Type R swap, the B16A. But now I have come to realization there is like zero autocross and short course racing events around me, but there is a lot of drags with muscle cars. And I wanna be on the strip with some slicks. We just put the traction bar on too. So that wheel hop should be a minimum. Same with the torque steer and make some boost with the B18B. Now the plan for boost is gonna be a top mount turbo. You guys already know we have the turbo, 0.63 AR max speeding rods turbo. eBay intercooler kit, hopefully fabbed up with V-bands. Three inch titanium hood exit, one and a half inch um, titanium external wastegate exit, right side by side, coming out the hood with that little you know, diamond exhaust plate going around, three inch teardrop right beside the external wastegate. Shoot right out of the hood, big flames. I'm sure you guys are all excited to see that. I'm excited to build it, drive it, hear it, experience it, and live it. Now, last video, we just put our traction bar on this car, and that is in preparation for the boost. So if you can't tell, I'm kind of taking this car that I built for back road driving, spirited driving, street driving, autocross, short course, a very nimble, light, high revving, VTEC, and a monster, and I'm kind of twisting and contorting that to be more of a drag setup. Um, hopefully gonna get on some BC coils. We're gonna retain the K-Tune camber kit. We have the traction bar now, and with the B18 built engine and a top mount turbo kit, this thing should be an absolute monster. I am going to fit a 225 or equivalent in flotation size slick on the front of this, and I'm probably just gonna run these Koenig countergrams um, with the Nittos out back with the big slip slicks up front. Um, it is still on a stock trans and stock axle, so it's just a matter of time until either an axle or a trans lets go, and then we'll have to transition into looking at built transmissions, how to build them, um, and getting some insane shaft axles. Um, so that's kind of the plan for the powerhouse of this car. It's getting taken from that autocross, spirited, street driving, back road driving, sorry, to more of a drag, straight line, let's line them up and let's run it car, just because that's what my town has more of to offer. Therefore, that brings me more content, more legal racing videos, because you know, we don't mess with street racing or any of that on the street. We just like to have a good time with the homies. Um, so hopefully we'll get more into that. I plan on getting one of those Insta360 cameras, sticking it off the back and showcasing all the drag racing, showing maybe some people rolling up on me on the highway and seeing what this thing could do. 
Um, we're going to be running it off gate, 8 to 10 pounds to start off with. One, that should land us about 275-ish, 250, 275, just under 300 horse, which is what our Veloster N makes factory, which is crazy because this is so much lighter. It will gap that thing and golf ours and such of the sort. But I know I'll get bored of that because years back, if you're an OG OG, you know we had our built Integra with the GSR engine, fully forged everything, whole set HX35, making 450, 500 wheel horsepower. So I know that I'm going to get bored of it sooner or later. We're going to ship my ECU with Honda back off to where I bought it from, Garage 5. And they are going to put in boost by gear, send me an electronic boost controller, and then we're going to retune it and hopefully be able to ramp up to about 15 pounds or so. The limiting factor on a stock bottom end B18 is the skinny ass connecting rods and so they can only initially handle about 8 to 10 pounds of boost hitting it before they fold. So the idea is if you run boost by gear you can hit it with an initial 8 to 10 pounds and then once it's already hit the rods with 8 to 10 pounds you then ramp up to about 12 or 15 pounds of boost once that initial 8 or 10 psi is already hit. Because if you hit a stock B18 rod with 15 pounds, you might get a pull or two and that thing will fold. But if you hit it with 8 or 10 pounds and then ramp it up through the RPM range and the gear range to about 15 or so, it'll make a lot more horsepower and it'll save the bottom end of this engine. I would like to send the B16 off to get fully forged and sleeved and be able to handle about five or 600 wheel horsepower so that I can put this back in turboed VTEC B16 and you know, make about 450, 500 and basically rebuild my fully built Acura Integra I had. I missed that car, I wish I never would have got rid of it and if I had this space back then, I probably would still have that car boosted in this one NA. But enough talking about the engine, that is what's going on with this engine. Couple other things I wanna do, if you guys remember back to the summer, we had to put the glass headlight housings back in because our aftermarket um, blackout housings that looked super dope, um, they actually had a reflector inside crack and fall off. I don't know if that was due to the vibrations because of solid engine mounts or what that's from, but I had to go back to the glass headlight housing, so this time I'm gonna do a different company, blackout housings, because it just looks so much better than these stock ones. Also a couple tabs are broken on my reflector, so I'm just gonna get these same amber ones and replace them. Back of the car, the tail lights, the red and black, the smoke out tail lights. I wanna get rid of those. I liked them while I had them, but my all time favorite tail lights on hatchback civics are candy cane, chrome and red. They're just super hard to find in Canada for three door hatchbacks, but I found a set and you already know they're on order. So that's gonna be the new lighting setup for this. Candy cane tails back to blackout and new signals that actually fit because there's tabs broken and as you can probably tell, that fitment is trash. I would like to finally ditch the Mugen lip on the front. My favorite lip for these is spoon lips. I'm not gonna be paying spoon price, but I have finally found a replica spoon lip. So I'm probably gonna do that. I do like the spoon wing as well, but I love the Osaka Devil Wing and it adds the third brake light. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and get one of those. It's just a more accentuated version of the spoon wing that we have on this and it has a third brake light, which is always nice to have. I'd finally like to get this thing tinted as well, but where I live, you can't tint the driver, passenger, or the windshield. It's just behind. So then the car would be half fishbowl, half not. That's why I've always just left it full fishbowl because I like a uniform look instead of half and half. And I kind of want to leave it untinted in the rear because I want to get the PLM X bar as well as a two point circuit hero gusseted big strut bar for the front shipped off to powder coat candy apple red not the same powder coating guys that fucked up my B16 valve cover that's for sure but I think that'd be badass walking around this car to show and you see a big huge PLM X bar candy apple red and then you come to the hood and you see the fat Circuit Hero 1 gusseted candy apple red as well. It'll just tie it all in together so nice. So that's my foot plan as far as chassis bracing. Obviously it's more than just looks. Both those components stiffen up this chassis a lot because let's be real, this was built, sold, and made by Honda back in the 90s for a grocery getter, economy, cheap on fuel, light, dinky car. They are not reinforced. You have to do that. And as you guys have known, I haven't had any strut bars on this car. So PLM X bar, candy apple red, circuit hero gusseted, two point strut bar in the front, both candy apple red. That with the top mount turbo kit should be unbelievable. I did go ahead and order the PLM, private label MFG, my homies over there. We have a lot of their parts on this car. I ordered their B series top mount turbo kit. So yes, when you open this hood, that turbo is going to be sitting 
right there. Not a ram horn tucked under, not a shitty log manifold. You know I like my engine bays and you guys know my engine bays are clean as they get and I wanna retain that. And to me, ram horn is okay, but you're always kinda of searching for the turbo because it's tucked so far under and log manifolds look like eBay ass. So we're going PLM top mount turbo on this unit. And if you guys don't remember, we spray painted this car in a pop-up tent from Home Depot, practically in the middle of nowhere. Did the paint come out great? I'll leave that up for you to decide. But one piece that turned out horrendous is the roof, as we all know, Tiger Stripe City. It is horrendous, but it is completely smooth. There's no discrepancies, there's no waves. It just looks like tiger stripes because the, the cans don't like to be held like this spraying down. So what I'm gonna do with that is order the proper amount and proper style of gloss black wrap and we're gonna go ahead and wrap just one piece of the car because you guys know how I feel about wrap. I hate it. But the roof, I can live with. At least it gets held down by the trim and things like that and shouldn't peel up. But regardless, anything is better than that tiger striped mess. That has got to go. Another thing, my nice Recaro SR3s, although they are nice, they are getting old and the back actually rocks back and forward. And to me, it's just not safe. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm not gonna get crazy seats, but I'm just gonna go ahead and get some fixed back NRG Prisma seats to chuck them in there to clean that up. I'd also like to get rid of the discolored interior. Back in the day when I started the build of this car, I went through the transition of putting all the interior plastics to black. I want to revert that now and go back to just fully gray interior, gray everything, and we definitely need a new headliner because that thing is disgusting. Now more onto the body, the side skirts up there are just stock and there's a little rust hole on the passenger side rear quarter. It's probably an inch big, it's a little tiny rust hole, so I wanna take those off fill the rust and then get the PCI race side skirts, the three inch ones that's just sheet metal, bracket down, bracket, and it's super clean. I really want the PLM side skirts on, or not PLM, sorry, the PCI side skirts because I think those just go crazy. Obviously more dress up under the engine bay. I wanna get all matching hardware for everything. I wanna get a carbon strip for this front bumper here to fill this gap and just kind of tidy up the car. I want 2024 to be the year of power getting this thing boosted, but I also want it to be the year of taking my already almost perfect car and actually making it perfect. No more mismatched engine mounts. We're gonna go with the billet, fully chrome, innovative, auto to manual, D and B series. Um, engine mounts for this car. If you guys also remember a while back, we got the Onaka ones. They weren't auto to manual because I didn't know at the time this car was an automatic to begin with. The last owner did the manual swap six years ago when I got it. And I wanted to go drop the engine mounts in and they were too wide for the actual ears on the frame of the car. So I just wanna take this year to do big power as well as cleaning everything up. I didn't wanna take away my clean engine bay and chuck a junky thousand dollar eBay turbo kit on here cause it would kill the beauty in the engine bay that I've created. And I'm not here to have stuff looking like trash just to go fast. I like doing it right, I like doing it once and I like just being done with it. So that's why it's taken a little bit longer to turbo than expected, but I'm gonna do it right, man. Titanium everywhere, the whole nine, and I just want this thing to be a monster, but a beautiful monster if you're picking up what I'm putting down. The price I paid for the top mount manifold for this is the price of eBay turbo kits. I could have bought a whole turbo kit, but I spent that entire amount of money on just a manifold. If you guys can't tell, I'm committed to making this one of the sexiest turbo setups you've ever seen under the hood of a Honda Civic. You got another thing coming. Because when this thing is built, under this hood is going to be so incredibly clean and that's why this is taking me so much longer than usual. We got a lot of snow outside and if you can't tell that snow is obviously making blockages in shipping as well. A lot of parts that were supposed to come last week, the week before, I don't even know where they are anymore. They're still in the mail somewhere. So please bear with me as I get this build underway, but that is the 2024 build plan. This thing is going for as much power as we can physically squeeze out of stock Honda rods until it pops and we have to go back to this B16. 
and I want to make it as clean as possible, which is why I'm not just spending a thousand bucks getting an eBay turbo kit, slapping it on, calling up my tuner and being done with that. I want this done once, I want it done right, and I want it to be perfect. And that's what it's going to be. So if any of that excites you guys, please comment, like, subscribe, turn those notifications on so you never miss an upload throughout the process of this car. I've owned it for the last six years. It's been getting built and gone through many phases in the last six years. Tens of thousands of dollars have been spent on it. And I'm telling you guys, we're quite literally just starting. 2024 is going to be a huge year for us. And I have one very special part for the B18B build. You guys know I don't like that engine because of the valve cover that's on it. We got a new valve cover. So why don't we stop talking about this thing and go check out the new valve cover and talk about the plans for that because I want you guys to vote on what you like better in the comments below. So let's go. All right, in this box, I have got a new valve cover for our built B18B. This thing is almost ready to go back on. I have the full timing belt, water pump, new spring right here, new tensioner and new belt. I'm just waiting on an oil pump to show up for it. And then we can finally do the timing, make sure everything's good, order the engine mounts, get the Marasso baffled and drilled oil pan for the oil drain from the turbo, stick the new valve cover back on with the new dress up hardware from Speed Factory, get the top mount turbo back on, and this thing is going to be so beautiful. But it can't be beautiful with this valve cover. There's two B18B non VTEC valve covers. There's this one, which I like to call the six pack. It's got the six pack on. It's actually got an eight pack on it, but it just looks horrendous. I mean, look at a VTEC cover. That is gorgeous. That is horrendous, but it doesn't end there because there's one valve cover. It's a little bit harder to get for B18s, for non VTEC B18s. Let's go ahead and open this up. And let's see the new valve cover. That is right. We have got another B18B valve cover. This time it's the one with the dual runners. These stand a lot taller than these ones. These ones are so shallow and it's got these weird blocks everywhere. Whereas this one is just two long runners and it's super simple, clean and to the point. I am going to have to find a block off for this PCV since we don't have that on this engine. And I'd like to keep this, but leave the timing cover off a little bit so you can see the timing belt and half the cam gears. But one thing I want you guys to vote on, should I go a full mirror polish on this with a brushed aluminum centerpiece and titanium dress up? Or do I retain its factory and go wrinkle black with titanium dress up? You guys need to let me know in the comments below, wrinkle black or fully polished. Obviously this is not going to be staying on here. This just came with it, but I need you guys to let me know wrinkle black or fully polished. Put it in the comments right now. Let's slap this valve cover on just to see how much better it is than the other one. Look number one with the B18B ugly valve cover and look number two with the good valve cover. I don't know about you guys, but this valve cover is so much cleaner than the one with the ribs. I've showed a million people because I was still undecided if I just send it with the little uglier one and let the turbo kit do the talking or if I get the nice one and everybody agreed this valve cover is 10 times nicer than the other one. But I need, I need you guys to let me know. Do you want to see this valve cover polished on this engine? Fully polished or do you want to see it wrinkle black? Let me know in the comments below because as far as I'm concerned, even with how dirty and grungy it is, this engine already looks 20 times better just with a good valve cover on it. So I'm stoked on that. Oil pump needs to come for this. We can reassemble this and hopefully get it back in the car sooner than later. Okay boys, and with all that being said and done, you now know my full build plans with my built EG hatch 
and the B18 Turbo, and we've taken a look at the nicer of the two valve covers that I now finally have in my possession. If you guys are excited, because I definitely am, comment, like, subscribe, notification bell clicked on so you can see the full power build and cleaning this car up. And until next time, boys, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.